In C Sharp, one of the APIs that I have to work with the most is probably the stream class. And the stream class is probably one of the APIs that I hate the most. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. In this video, I want to walk through some oddities with the stream class when it comes to downloading things off the internet. We're going to look at an example where we try to download a video, and this could be any large file that you might want to consider, and some of the nuances that come into play when we go do this. A quick reminder that if you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. With that said, let's head over to Visual Studio and look at this simple example for downloading a video. Okay, on my screen right now, I have an HTTP client that I'm creating at the top, and we're going to download this video. It's about 20 megabytes from samplelib.com. Nothing too fancy here, just a free sample of a file for a video that we could check if we wanted to, to make sure that it's the right content. And it's 20 megabytes, so it's not like a trivial couple kilobytes that we're downloading or a couple bytes. We really have something that we can go check after, make sure it's okay. We're going to download this, and what I'm going to do is compare a couple of different methods. So the traditional way, and I've already included sort of this extra parameter that we don't necessarily need to see because it's the default. But what we're going to do is look at this first method where we try to ask our HTTP client to go to this URL. So it's a get request. We will go to this URL and ask for the content and we'll read it back as a stream. I have a stopwatch around here. I have a little disclaimer because I've had some comments on previous videos where people are like, hey, you can't use that. That's not good for benchmarking. Surprise, I'm not benchmarking it. It's going to be a quick comparison. And what I want to do after is look at some of the details for the stream that we get back. I'm going to start with this one. We'll check it out in the debugger as well. So um, I will put a breakpoint here. So we'll look at the details in the debugger before looking at it in the console. But pretty simple, right? Download a video from this URL. Let's see what's up. All right, so the video editor probably did a good job and trimmed that out because it was boring while it waited there, waiting for the whole video to download. I have pretty good internet too. It should have gone pretty fast, but surprise, it took a little while. How long did it take? Well, it took about 12 and a half seconds, right? 12.59 seconds. Yeah, I know it's a stopwatch. It's not the most accurate thing in the world for us to be using for situations like this, but it's going to get the point across when we go to compare things. So we got the stream. If I go check out the stream, if I hover over it, right? Stream one here, it's a memory stream. This is something I want you to pay attention to as we go forward. So what's cool about this though, is that we have a seekable stream. So a stream that we can seek through front to back, we can start wherever we want, we have it, and we have a length. What's important about that length is depending on what you're trying to do in your application, you're trying to download something from the internet, you may want to care about how big that target is that you're about to try downloading. There's something interesting about this, and if you're not familiar with streams and the different stream APIs that we have to work with, a memory stream is a stream where all of the data is, well, in memory which means that we downloaded this video and we technically have a memory stream that's holding or wrapping around this byte array that is the full 20 megabytes of the video. It's not downloaded to my disk somewhere. It didn't do something else. It's just downloaded into an array wrapped in this memory stream, which is interesting. When we did this, we now got a stream that we can seek through. That's one of the properties of a memory stream. The reason I'm calling this out and the length as well is that when you go to leverage streams, there's a couple of interesting things that you can do with them in terms of copying data, you know, moving through them. But the API that we get allows you to make those calls, but the API doesn't enforce that the stream that you're working with must be able to do those behaviors. This is the first example. Like I said, we get the full stream downloaded into memory. It's seekable. We have the full length. All great things for us to work with. But the weird thing is that it truly all is in memory. 20 megabytes for a small application like this, not a big deal, right? But if you're running a web service and you need to be able to stream things in and stream them back out and you have many requests, you could imagine that concurrently you might find yourself in a situation where there's a ton of memory being used. And the other thing that was important was the size. We need to be able to look at the size of the content we're dealing with. So really, when I go to look at this next example, I want to be looking at the header that we're using or one of the properties for working with the header. I had a little bit of a spoiler, this HTTP completion option, and it's this response headers read versus response content read. This one is the default. This is what I had originally. And if I include it here, this is technically the same thing that's going on. 
Before continuing on, just a quick note from this video sponsor, which is Pact Publishing. Pact has lots of great books on C Sharp and .NET development, and in particular, I wanted to talk about this one, Web Development with Blazor. If you're a C Sharp and .NET developer and you've been looking for a front-end technology that you can leverage C Sharp in, this book is going to be an awesome fit for you. You can learn how to build Blazor applications so you can leverage C Sharp in the front end. You can check it out in the links below in the description and the comments. Thanks and back to the video. All right, and now I want us to look at this next example that we have here. This one's going to be response headers read versus response content read. Everything else about this example is set up to be the exact same. I've just given it a two as the suffix instead of one. So we are going to have both of these. We can go compare and you'll see that in the output here, I'm doing the same thing, right? We're going to get the stopwatch time that it took. We're going to get the length and we're going to see whether or not we can seek. So we're going to compare these two variations as soon as we put this instead of the former. And look, this is weird. It doesn't work. Why wouldn't this work though? It's the same thing. All that we've done is we've changed around that we're not dealing with the uh, content being fully read versus just reading in the headers. We're trying to say, hey, look, as soon as we get the headers, we can start working with the response versus waiting for all of that content. But this isn't working. We get a not supported exception. Well, what's not supported? If I hover over this, we can see the stream to length is not a supported method. So calling length on this particular stream will throw an exception. Also, if we check if we can seek, it's false. The first one, if I go back up, move this out of the way, we can see can seek is true. So well, what kind of stream is this? If we check it out, it's a HTTP connection content length read stream. It's not a memory stream. Something that's important to note about this particular stream when we compare it to the memory one is that the entire content is not preloaded in an array when we go to use this. It is a little bit more lazy in terms of functionality, but in terms of being able to see the result of that, we can't do that yet until we try to address this length issue. We don't have a stream with length on it. And that might be a problem if you really needed to use the length on your stream. What can we do about that? Well, there is an HTTP header that should be set. It's not forced to be, but it should be set if you're dealing with a client that you want to be able to download stuff from the internet. And those requests hopefully get the response with an HTTP header that is for the content length. So we could go check that out. All right, so something we can do is write some code that looks a little bit like this. You can do this in different ways, but we are going to ask the response for the headers, specifically the content length. This is going to come back as an I enumerable of strings or null if it doesn't get those headers. From there, we go and pick the first one. We can then try to do something like saying it's not found. It depends what you want to be able to do with this, right? At the end, I just want to be able to get the representation numerically of that header. Here I have length. It should be a numeric representation if it was present, and we can go ahead and replace that right here. Now, I do keep the stopwatch just around the stream part here because, yeah, this is potentially going to take a little bit of extra time. It shouldn't be noticeable at all, but I want to talk about the time it takes around the stream part and getting it from the internet specifically. Hopefully when we go to run this, we'll see more details. I'm not gonna debug it. Instead, we're gonna check it out in the console. Okay, now we have some data coming back and if we check out, we can see that the duration is about five seconds. That's a little bit faster than we saw the first time. It's about half the time it took. I don't know what's going on with that, but I am connecting out to the internet, so who knows exactly, right? We can see that we get the full length back because this one is a memory stream. It will have the full thing. We can see that with the memory stream, we can seek as well, so that allows us to go back and forth through the string. When we look at the second example, doing response headers read, you can see the duration is significantly faster, right? An entire order of magnitude. The first time we ever did this first one at the top was about 12 seconds, and this one's 132 milliseconds. What's kind of crappy is we can see that the length here is zero bytes, so I was checking for the header. I did go examine the headers coming back on this particular file request, and we're not getting the content length header. So not going to work all the time. So if you wanted to build something around this, you would have to check for the header and build in some resiliency around that because we can't guarantee that the server that we're requesting the file from will put that header in place, unfortunately. The other thing we see here is that we cannot seek on this stream, right? That's important. What you need to make sure that you're doing is when you're writing code working with these streams, if you need to be able to seek, you need to check the can seek property. 
generally I find, and again, it's not enforced, but if you cannot seek, usually you will not have a length as well. Those usually go hand in hand. Again, it's not enforced in code. You can go implement your own stream and do whatever the heck you want with it. I would advise that you check that. There is unfortunately no has length as far as I know, which is kind of crappy because it would be nice if you could check that before it throws an exception. That's why I'm suggesting usually if you check can seek and it's false, you probably do not have a length on the stream as well. However, like I was trying to show, if we go back to the code, if you are asking for the content length, that is a workaround that you would be able to potentially have a length to work with. What you could do from there is if this did come back with a length, right? So let's say it came back and it gave us the length of the original stream like we saw in the first example with the memory stream. Now we know the full length of the content. Awesome. What we could do from there is build a stream that would essentially wrap that and have the length for us. So you could, if you wanted to, I'm not gonna walk through all the details of this, but you could go make your own class here. So we'll do class stream with length, and then we could make it inherit from a stream, which is an abstract class. I believe it's marked as abstract. It is good, okay, I'm not making stuff up. That's what we like to see. But you'll notice that like, there is a, a lot of stuff that you have to go implement on a stream, unfortunately, right? That's why I'm not going to go through all the details of this. But what you could do is have a stream that you're wrapping. Maybe we'll call it like inner, right, for the inner stream. And then we can ask Visual Studio to slap a constructor on there for us and pass it in. And if this is a stream with length, what you could do instead is, and this, I'm not trying to give you the best API for this, but you could pass in a length specifically and that way here let me go make this a field as well i'm just using some shortcuts by the way um so this might say initialize property length where's the field is there no that's kind of silly i thought visual studio had a oh that's what it's doing it sees that there is a property already and that's why it's suggesting i use it so you could do this instead where instead of all of these going to like inner can write inner can see and you kind of just do these forwarding properties and forwarding methods. For the length itself, you might say, hey, look, like I'm overriding whatever the inner one says because we know it's going to throw exceptions. And if you were able to get the length off of the header itself, you could essentially go wrap your network stream inside of this one and pass in the length off of the content. This unfortunately doesn't fix your issue with seeking. You're still wrapping a, string, or a stream that you cannot seek through, unfortunately, but you could at least get a little bit further with the length. The entire point of this is that I wanted to walk you through the fact that the stream API can be challenging to navigate. And if you're expecting that you can always seek or expecting that you'll always have a length, especially when you're working with network resources and things like that, it's not always going to line up well for you. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see some coverage on benchmarks, you can go ahead and check out this video next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.